this video has taken me forever to figure out. I, it started out to be one thing, then it became like another thing, and this is like the seventh time I've started it because I've realised the video I wanted to do is not the video that's happening. <laughs> anyway hi everyone today i'm back in this like cozy spot it's a little bit brighter than the previous one because i figured settings out but it's still cozy we've still got the lamp on in the corner and all that good stuff i want to try and do a bit of a discussion video the only problem i have is i don't actually know exactly what i want to talk about <laughs> there's like a couple things but they don't really connect but they kind of do and like this could end up becoming like a big mental health conversation and you know i'm open about it but i don't know i that's not what i want to discuss i wanted to discuss my bookshelves <laughs> actually well let's start with what the video was supposed to be my mom and stepdad have just left about an hour ago they're going away I think they're going to Stirling for the evening. They're going to do some shopping tomorrow. Apparently mum's getting my birthday. I don't know what she's going to get me because all I want is my room tidied, which leads on to the video. Because they're away, their room is free. And I was like, oh, the best way to like tidy a room and stuff is to just clear everything away. You start with a blank canvas, you put things in and then you're like, okay, I don't have room for other stuff. Do I need this? Do I get rid of it? All that kind of thing. But it's really hard when like in Britain, we don't just have like spare rooms or big spaces, you know, it's not like the big houses in America that you see and all that. And you know, some people do have spare rooms and shit, but like we live in a semi-detached two bedroom and there's just no room for anything. Because they're away, I can utilize their room and put all of my crap in it. The main thing that's gonna go in there are my books. Although I am thinking I've got so much shit on my floor, like depression, anyone with depression will know you just don't care do you know what I mean and my room it's it's one of those messes where it's really not that bad like it will literally clear in like 10-15 minutes but it just looks dreadful it's just clothes a lot of it's holiday clothes it just needs to go in the holiday box in my wardrobe but I digress I first started off the video talking about how I productively procrastinate but that kind of divulged into my mental health and all these undiagnosed issues and I was like this is not the video for that. I guess the real discussion I want to have is about owning books. I love owning books, I love collecting books, I have like eight copies of actually I don't even know how many copies of Harry Potter I have now, eight or nine. I have about eight copies of Dead Dimension I Love You and I have I think seven copies of Wicked. However many copies of Lame is, like books that I absolutely love I like to have different copies of and obviously having multiple copies of one book takes up a lot of space and what takes up even more space are all of my unread books and I'm kind of pointing at every single bookshelf because apart from like series and stuff there's literally one shelf up the top of books that I have actually read of all the books I own I have probably read maybe five percent at most and you know it's not great it's stressful when you have so many books and the thing that i have realized i think it was read with cindy how she made a video called like why i only own four books and i haven't watched it yet because i don't want to be attacked <laughs> but it did get me thinking and then i watched books with emily fox her recent try a chapter unhaul and she said how one of the books she read she's like oh i could continue reading that and enjoy it but I wouldn't love it so she doesn't see the point in keeping it and I'm like that's a problem that I have you know sometimes I look at a book and think oh I'm not that interested I could just unhaul it but I read the first page and I'm like oh it's actually okay when in reality it might only be a three star read and that's fine if it was one of very very few books on my TBR but I have so many books I look at and I'm so excited to read but I'm drowning in them, which makes it overwhelming because I'm like, which one do I read first? But then you add in all these random books that I don't really care about, that I only bought because they were like in a multi-buy deal or they were cheap in a charity shop because it was signed. And I need to learn to kind of just let go. I'm a very big what if person. I always think, you know, what if I get rid of a book and it would have been a favourite? And it's ironic because as much as I'm such a what if person, I am very much a kind of fate destiny person. Like, I do think that what's for you won't go by you. And yes, you have to work for stuff, but things will come to you that you're meant to have and all this shit, right? And in that case, if I unhaul 
divergent, right? If that book's supposed to be in my life, I will come across it again or do you know, if I ever get the notion to read it, that's such a popular book I can always pick it up really cheap or get it in a library. So I want to be really ruthless, especially with books I have read, because once I've read a book, I get an attachment to it and I'm like, I can't get rid of it. That's not great, because when I have books that were maybe two or three star reads that, you know, I didn't really like them, but they were okay, they're taking up shelf space. And as we mentioned, there's books that I will multiple copies of. Why would I have 10 three star books that they were all right, but I'm never gonna recommend to anyone or talk about on here really, when I could have 10 copies of a book that I utterly adore? And I know some people would disagree. They're like, you know, why have you got so many copies of one book? But, you know, I feel like, you know, bookshelves are a representation of us as readers. And I would rather somebody came in and saw just an entire shelf of Gregory Maguire and went, wow, she loves Gregory Maguire. Then they look at a shelf with all these random ass books and they're like, what's this? And I'm like, oh, I didn't really like it. And they're like, you know, they don't get to see who you are as a reader from that. You know, there will always be certain books that were only three star reads or even some that are like one star reads I hated that I will keep just because. But there are so many books that I keep that I don't care about. There was one I read on holiday. I can't reach it because I have short arms. I picked it up in a charity shop and it's called French for Kissing and it's a typical younger YA kind of tween book about this girl who goes to a summer camp. She's a bit of a delinquent actually but she likes, she's fascinated with France and stuff so she'll always use like French vocab so if she wants to say like oh what a surprise she will just say Kelsey surprise and all of that kind of stuff and it does have like a glossary in the back and I was like oh I love it that's like so me but the book was just my life is not fulfilled or enriched by having read it and that was the book that kind of sparked me thinking I don't need to keep that I don't need to take up shelf space I want my shelves to be full of books that I love that I enjoy that I want to recommend and books that I cannot wait to pick up I turned most of my TBR this way around the TBR books that I'm like I don't think I'm gonna pick that up of my own volition. These aren't just books that I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna enjoy them. There are books in there that I'm excited about. They're just lowered down on the excitement level. So they are also in there with books that I am like, I could unhaul this, but I, what if I do like it? But I haven't went and picked anything up from there. So it's not working. What I need to do, I think if it was full of books that I'm excited about both massively and lower, I pick things up but knowing there's books in there that I don't think I'm gonna want to read puts me off because I told myself if I don't read it when I pull it out I need to get rid of it so I don't pull it out so I can't get rid of it but then I'm not reading it it's a mess and it doesn't make any sense it's stressing me out in front of me I have a whole bunch of books that I have been sitting there for probably a year that I want rid of but I'm looking at and I know I haven't went and just donated them because I'm like oh but and it is so stupid because my room is a mess. My bookshelves are a mess. They're double stacked for the most part. So I can't even put little like trinkets or pop figures or anything on it because it's a mess. It needs to change. And I think, in fact, I know booktube has influenced me to be this type of reader. I did have bookshelves as a kid. I had a bookshelf when I first moved into this house like 10 years ago. And I only had the books like I'd read in childhood and absolutely adored. I read most of my books from the library so you know it's not like I grew up owning all my books like I literally read 99% library books I am used to giving back the books I haven't read and you know especially now with things like Goodreads and booktube I can very very easily keep track and remember what books I've had and read I don't need to see them every day Do you know my room's supposed to be a place of relaxation and inspiration but it's hard when I'm looking at books that I don't know anything about that I don't really care about that I didn't like that this should be a haven for me and I've really fallen out of love with my bookshelf recently like seriously fell out of love with them I was always that person when people bashed booktubers for owning so many books you know you get those booktube newbies who are like I'm poor I just use the library you know fuck the big ones with all their books I'd be like rude but I get it and you know okay maybe some of those people it does stem from jealousy in the sense that they wish they could own so many books but why do you know why do we feel the need 
why was I buying 70 books? Yes, okay, part of it, I think, goes back to the mental health thing I was talking about and a sort of impulse to buy. But a lot of it is because I would be thinking, I haven't bought books yet, I need to do a haul. And the reality is, I don't need to do a haul. How much do we really care about the books other people haven't read? Now, yes, I do enjoy a haul. I like being able to say to someone, you've got this book that I loved, or, oh, I didn't actually like that. But if somebody was only hauling books, you wouldn't be interested. We want to know their thoughts on the books. Hauls are great, I love them, but I feel like booktube in a way has become quite focused on what books people are buying and they're getting rather than what they're reading. It's became very much about an input rather than the output. And, you know, I just posted my first review in years. It was a very kind of wibbly wobbly review but you know that's what booktube was about it was about book reviews and we never see them i see smaller booktubers doing them and i never watch them because they're always like spoiler reviews on books i haven't read yet so i'm like i can't watch that and i think that's the problem i haven't planned this out but that is just i, I genuinely i think a lot of people now you know and i'm not gonna i'm not like sitting here like i'm so innocent we are here for views you know what i mean like we want people to watch our channel and subscribe to us. You know, like, I think a lot of people are put off doing reviews because it's very much the sort of thing that someone will be curious about a book and they'll be like, oh, Bridge of Clay, Marcus Zusak review. Like, they're thinking, I write, I like the book thief, but I don't know about his new book. So they want to see what people have said. And, you know, not everyone knows about Goodreads. And it's one thing reading an Amazon review, but it's nice to have face to face. So I think that people kind of feel the review's just not going to get as many views and people just don't do it which is ironic because my most viewed video with like over a thousand views is a review but they're just not done i'm, I'm one to talk because i never do them and when i do do reviews i just blabber kind of like this i don't really plan my thoughts but i want to do more i want to get my ass in gear read some books and actually talk about them do you know i don't want the focus to be look at all these books i haven't read and i'm not saying i'm gonna like stop hauling books or do you know i'm not gonna like talk about it because like i've been desperate to do a bookshelf not a bookshelf tour but just like show you all my unread books and things but first i want to get rid of all of them not all of them but do you know i want to take all my books off of my shelves and i want to put up the ones i'm excited for have them organized and then look at the thousands that are sitting on like not on the shelf and be like well why am I keeping you? I have, you know, the Calax unit from Ikea. It's like the shelving unit that's got little squares and it goes all the way through it doesn't have a back. I have two of those cubbies, three deep with books piled on top as well of books. I never see them because I'm never in that wardrobe. Why am I keeping them? There's, there's no reason. I mean, okay, some of them I have a Roald Dahl block set and I have like my Judy Bloom books from when I was younger. So I do have some sentimental books there that I do want to keep that I don't necessarily want on my shelf. But there are so many books there that I'm just like, oh, I'll just keep that because maybe. And I'm like, if it's in the fucking wardrobe, it's not going to be chosen over the hundreds that are here. And I am drowning in books. You know, I, I get the appeal. Like, oh, I have so many books to choose from. Like, oh my God, you know, there's a zombie apocalypse and we have to stay in our homes. You know, like if the communists take over and they're like, nobody can leave the house. I am sorted for entertainment but then no <laughs> my book buying was a problem when I became a bookseller we had a 50% discount so naturally I was like hey £3.50 brand new book mine and I left a year ago and my book buying was non-existent and I did kind of find charity shops and would buy a fair few but when I started booktube again is when I went mental and I do think you know when you first start booktube or restart you do kind of get that I need to buy so many books and there's so many new books but no <laughs> and you know I'm not having a dig at anyone who does buy loads of books and enjoys keeping loads of them I can't talk I have loads of them but I have been lying to myself for a few months now that this is what I want. I don't. I want books I'm excited to read, books I've enjoyed. I want my books to be representative of me as a reader and they're not doing that right now. What they are showing is an eclectic mess which <laughs> to be fair that is quite representative of me. I am very much a mess and oh but I guess what I'm trying to say is for me I need to change my habits. Having bought 14 books in September which it was a crazy small amount for me. That felt good. It still feels like too much <laughs> on my TBR, but it felt good. So I want to continue that. I mean, obviously I'm going to New York this month. So like, 
and my birthday. 2019, cause like, let's be real, it's gonna take a couple months to kind of get into a flow. 2019 is gonna be a bit of a change. I'm gonna try and just have books. I love all this stuff and I feel like I'm just repeating myself now. I just wanted to get it off my chest. And I don't know if anyone else agrees. Like, does anyone else feel like they have way too many books and that they should really not? Because, not because like, oh, I have too many, but that, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not that we shouldn't buy books, but I think we should be buying books we want. I would much rather, and this is the opposite of what I would say a few months ago, but instead of going into a charity shop, instead of getting like 20 books for 30 pounds, I would rather get five books I really, really want for 30 because it's more valuable and I'm gonna appreciate them more, I think, than just a throwaway ch secondhand charity shop book. <sighs> I feel like a weight came off my shoulders. Like, as I said, this video started out as me talking about my mental health and procrastinating and wanting to tidy my room and unhaul and it became a revelation. Like, I don't know if you guys realise that, like, I have no notebook, nothing. That just all came from the heart right now. And it's good. I've realised one of the many things that's been bothering me of late and I know what I need to do. I need to try and tidy my room a little bit, I need to sort out my books. It's gonna be a process. I'm gonna try and do it today, tomorrow. I'm saying today is like eight o'clock at night, but fuck it, I slept all day so I can stay up all night and sort my bookshelves. Tonight and tomorrow, I need to just gut this room. I need to just make it a space where I can work and read and be zen. And we're gonna do it. I'm, I'm starting it now. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna end this video and turn this off and I'm gonna do it because if I put it off, I'm just gonna keep putting off and off and off. So yeah. That is my plan. I feel so good. Seriously guys, see if you're having a problem and you don't know what's wrong in your mind and what's like bugging you. Just sit and chat to the camera, it'll all come out. But that's from watching Emily Fox's video. So there you go. Let me know if this inspires you to have like a clear out of your bookshelves or rework how you want to do your whole like home library. Because I'm absolutely going to still buy books and there will absolutely be books and times where I'm like why the fuck have I bought these 10 books I don't care about but it's a start. I'm gonna start making progress. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a super unplanned video and I hope nobody thinks I'm like being a bitch. I mean I am a bitch but this is a reflection on me and the way booktube makes me feel not on you guys. If you want to keep buying shitloads of books go for it. And I mean, I'm saying that. Nobody I watch bought 70 books in a month. The problem isn't booktube, it's me. <laughs> it's the way I perceive booktube in a sense. But I think you guys get what I mean. So I'm gonna go and start moving everything into my mum's room and I will hopefully get these bookshelves sorted. I will attempt to do like an organisation video but this camera, right, I love it. I really, really love it. The best camera I've bought, best money I've spent. But if the battery dies, I, the, the cable's not long enough to like put it in, like because you can take the battery out to charge it, but there is like a USB cable, but I don't think that charges it. But also, like this is a second clip because it it's not even a universal time. Depend, I think it depends on the SD card. It'll film for like 15 to 25 minutes and then cut off. And I'm like, I am here, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's kind of annoying if I'm in the zone of moving books. I've got to be a little shit camera recording, but equally, you're in the way <laughs> for me moving everything. Like literally, the way my room is, this tripod takes up the whole floor space for me to like walk from the bookshelf to my door. So we'll see how it goes. I'm blabbering, I'm rambling on. I'm gonna go. Again, if you've watched this, thank you so much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!